Aaron Dykes, InfoWars.com, back in part two of our discussion of eugenics as a religion and the power of the state having the power of God. Now, I just got done showing you in part one Michael Peruka, a Constitution Party candidate, and his quote saying, the whole thing about the New World Order really says that the state is God. The state is God. Now, that concept is something we really have to think about. Alex Jones was talking on the show today about how it isn't the Constitution that's old and needs to be replaced. That system is relatively new versus the centuries, the millennia of pure tyranny we've had under state control uh, from the Egyptians and earlier periods on down to just before the founding of the Constitution. Somehow we've come to believe under modern propaganda that it's the Constitution and Bill of Rights that are outdated. That's not true. That's really a post-Renaissance development put in place to recognize the sovereignty, the importance, the value of individuals in this world, something that had never been recognized by state power before. And you really have Enlightenment thinkers, including the controversial Machiavelli, including Dante, uh, really recognizing that you don't want someone to be in total control. You want to leave, even if you don't believe in God, the power of God, uh, still, you want to leave that seat of power open. You don't want a tyrant, a man, an always fallible man, whether he's a king, a priest, some kind of intermediary, a banker. You don't want those people having final say over your life for what I hope are obvious reasons. Now, what does it mean for the state to be God or for eugenics to be a religion? Uh, well, I've already showed you the quotes of Alfred Wiggum, uh, who was a so-called religious leader who proposed the new Decalogue of Science and said that were he alive today, Jesus Christ would be head of the Eugenic Society. I've showed you quotes from George Bernard Shaw, who, the Fabian Socialist, who agreed uh, with the founder of eugenics, Francis Galton, in saying there's no excuse not for eugenics to be a religion, that it's the highest duty. I showed you quotes from Julian Huxley, the first director of UNESCO, saying the same thing, that eugenics really should be and could be our new religion uh, under the New World Order, essentially. And what does that mean? What kind of power uh, would the power of God entail? Well, first of all, uh, they've already declared selective selection over who breeds, who lives, who dies, selection over the birth rate. That's all controversial stuff, but it's not the end. Uh, I've referenced this book already, The Molecular Vision of Life, Caltech, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Rise of New Biology. They really sought under their project, Science of Man, to take control of all of man's life processes, to be able to socially engineer man through chemical, alchemical, through other means to physically change man. And that included on this chart, which I just skipped over, at least nine parts of the life cycle they recognized and targeted for control under their eugenics social engineering agenda. That includes biophysics and biochemistry, general physiology, genetics, experimental and chemical embryology, biology of sex, radiation effects, nutrition, internal secretion, psychobiology. Of course, there's a lot more to that, but what does that power of the state, the power of God, really entail? Uh, let's look at number two on the list, internal secretions, and something written by Bircher and Russell, who wrote The Impact of Science on Society, really uh, playing down the importance of the individual, playing up the importance of the state. Here's something he wrote. He was affiliated with the Fabian Society as well as the Eugenic Society. Uh, in 1922, he wrote for the Birth Control News that the dependence of emotional disposition upon the ductless gland, said Mr. Russell, was a discovery of great importance which was a discovery of great importance which would in time make it possible to produce artificially any disposition desired by the governments. Now that is the power of God uh, being attempted to be placed into the hands of government. Uh, here we have the social engineering and they list internal secretions, hormones. Uh, that agenda started in the early 20s and here we have a 1924 birth control news Mr. Bertrand Russell talking about that power. Uh, he wrote similar things in his book, The Impact of Science on Society, about how 
Diet, injections, and injunctions will combine from an early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable, and any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. He writes how it's to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they even have now in totalitarian countries. This is in 1953. Uh, Fitch, who was part of Hegel's agenda, also wrote how it laid down that education should aim at destroying free will and again placing in the hands of the New World Order the power of God into the hands of state. And we see here too how Bertrand Russell calls for in the birth control news in the very early 20s. He hopes that since there's no wisdom for birth control in the countries with the colored races, we need a strong international authority. He also writes that if a world organization, however oppressive, however oppressive, were once created, ordered progress would again become possible. So they're talking about a kind of progress ordered through total state control. And this is the same Bertrand Russell who wrote about withholding food from countries, uh, holding it hostage for countries that were overpopulated, those that didn't agree to depopulation targets set up by the United Nations, UNESCO, and related arms of the same agenda. Uh, that is the same proposal talked about in Ecoscience by John P. Holdren, uh, who wrote that an international planetary regime should withhold food for populations that didn't meet depopulation targets. The same concept was talked about by none other than Henry Kissinger when he was head of state, secretary of state that is, as well as national security advisor. He wrote an NSSM, the National Security Memo number 200, uh, the same concept, that food could be used as a weapon, that the third world countries were overpopulated, naming specific countries to be targeted, and then suggesting that if they didn't depopulate, uh, a world food rationing program should thereby withhold food from them until a proportionate amount of their population was reduced. That is just part of many of the aspects they seek to control over society, a total, almost godlike power sought by the New World Order through the eugenics system over our lives and completely in contradiction to the Constitution and our Bill of Rights.